one of the ways in which we oversimplify things, I think. Uh, you know, again, where I'm from, no one you know, of Mexican background in West Texas had ever heard of a Latino until about 10 minutes ago. Uh, it was just not an idea that came to them. I was talking to a guy who owns a restaurant down there who has himself been an illegal immigrant, although he's lived there for a long time. And he was saying, we, we've got to get control of the border. Said, what, are you, what are you trying to do? We're an illegal immigrant. He's like, we've got Guatemalans coming. We can't have Guatemalans coming. Uh, so, you know, like, you know, contains, contains a lot. Intercommunity yeah. pressure. I wanted to ask you as a, as a Venezuelan specifically, how much of our problem do you think is the word capitalism? That people hear the word capitalism, they think of something that they don't like. They think of the Tyrell Corporation from uh, Blade Runner or something like that. They think of, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs, some evil, uh, you know, kind of boardroom conspiracy. They think of the worst kind of things that you see in the American economy or in, certainly in Latin American economies and South Asian places like that. They don't understand what we mean by that, I think, by the word capitalism. Am I wrong about that? Am I right about uh, that? Yeah, I think you are totally right. And I myself try not to use the word capitalism too much. I prefer to use um, a classical liberalism or libertarianism, uh, which doesn't have this uh, baggage, this uh, negative baggage as capitalism does. Free trade, that's like a trendy word right now that I prefer to use. Also, because well, the le le lefties are willing to listen to you if you call it free trade. Well, the Chinese, uh, uh, aging Americans like to hear about uh, a market economy, free enterprise shift. Uh, when I go out talk to aging Americans, if I first bring out social issues like uh, legalization of marijuana or gun, they get into argue with me. So I focus on what they really truly care about. Most of aging Americans are considered to be model minorities. They work hard, they are small business owners, they are taxpayers. So what they complain about most is the government is getting so expensive, taxes are everywhere, they are paying for everything, and their voices are not heard, and politicians all are corrupt. So I go out and hammer those and from a libertarian point of view, uh, how we see taxes, how we would like to keep government clean, transparent, and small, and limited. And I would like to say, before we get rid of income tax, to go to consumption tax, I will say, what do you think we will be just like Hong Kong many years ago, have 10% flat personal income and the corporation income tax, and you have a little postcard at the end of year, send out to the government, send you a check, no CPAs and no IRS and being paying of you, but you know, every day and, and they say, oh, we like that very much, you know, because they work hard, they save hard, they don't deserve, uh, deserve to be treated like the way they are treated today. It's like never enough, more regulations. You know, Chinese always tell their kids to start their own business, encourage them to get the best education, become high paying professionals or start their own business. But the entry of the market today is heavily regulated. So I start to teach them to see things differently. You know what license, what the government permit means? It just they take away your freedom and sell back to you. And then they agree with that. It's like, yeah, why can't I just start my own business so easily? So you have to focus on the concerns they have and you try not to create a controversial uh, argument at the very beginning because I did get a into argument about Second Amendment right on the radio with this host because Taiwanese people, Chinese people all are brainwashed to have a strict gun control. They don't trust their own citizens to have a, the Second Amendment rights. So, so I'm trying to not to get into that argument until the very end. And once they build up trust with you, they can listen to you, and then you throw out your rational argument. But at the beginning, focus on something they can agree with you to have conversations a little bit longer. I think that's more effective. I, I want to ask one last question. I'll turn it over to questions from the audience.